We're listening to Inga Reed's The SBA Fencing Marshal's Handbook. My name is Ingegard Kastanrazi, and I am reading section 7, which begins on page 16 of the SBA Fencing Marshal's Handbook for the 2020 April edition. And we'll begin with use of weapons and defensive objects. You may listen to other sections on my playlist. And again, as always, if you have comments, questions, concerns, or complaints regarding the rules, please check with your kingdom marshal and your local kingdom and local policy regarding those rules, as they can be different kingdom to kingdom, region to region, and this is not meant to replace that, only complement that. This is just from the Society's book. Um, and if you have any comments, questions, concerns, complaints regarding the recording itself, you may address them to me, Ingegard Kassenrazi. I live in the kingdom of Atlantia, and I'd be happy to talk to you about these recordings. So, section seven, use of weapons and defensive objects. 7.1. All blows are to be delivered with control, with the aim of delivering the lightest blow that meets the standard for SCA fencing. Refer to section 8.1. 7.1.1. While combatants are encouraged to recreate the technique and style of period fencing, they should not recreate the force required for an actual wounding, wounding or killing blow. SCA fencing does not aim to recreate the force with which a given blow would have been delivered if harm were intended. Such force is beyond that which our protective standards are intended. 7.1.2 Blows intended to deliver force beyond that which is necessary for acknowledgement are not allowed. Continued infractions of this rule will lead to disciplinary action by the marshalate. 7.1.3 The above requirements are difficult to achieve under all circumstances and training levels. The difference between a blow that is hard enough and too hard may be less than, one in, less than an inch of linear distance between two rapidly moving fighters who may not have a perfect perception of the other's intent. 7.1.4 Deviations from the ideal will occur frequently through no fault of the combatants as no scenario and no fighter is perfect. 7.1.5 Fighters and marshals are required to resolve such incidents. No prejudgment or rule shall be made which defines who was necessarily at fault. 7.2 Valid blows with a dagger, single-handed sword, or two-handed sword and light rapier for rapier combat are 7.2.1 Thrust with a note of 5, which says required for all kingdoms. 7.2.2 Tip cut with a footnote of 6, optional for all kingdoms. 7.2.3 Push cut with a footnote of 6, optional for all kingdoms. 7.2.4 Draw cut, required for all kingdoms. Now I'm going to skip down to the footnotes 5 and 6 at the bottom here and read them. So for a thrust with a valid blow with a dagger, single-handed sword, or two-handed sword and light rapier or rapier combat, the footnote for thrust, which is required for all kingdoms, says... Under footnote 5, underlined items are defined in the glossary in Appendix 1. The footnote 6, which refers to the tip cut and push cut in the same section for blows with a dagger, single-handed sword, or two-handed sword and light rapier or rapier combat, reads as follows. Footnote 6 is, per section 1.2, any kingdom may limit their rules to be more restrictive than these rules. So those are the two footnotes that are referred to in 7.2. I will now continue to 7.3. 7.3. Valid blows with a dagger, single-handed sword, or two-handed sword, and cut and thrust combat include the above and also. 7.3.1. 
percussive glove required for all kingdoms. 7.4 Valid Blows with a Spear 7.4.1 The only valid blow with a spear is a thrust. And we're going to move on to page 17 with 7.4.2 For single tournament combat, this type of weapon is considered a non-standard device. An opponent may decline to face a non-standard device without forfeiting a bout. 7.4.3 A fighter may not set this weapon by bracing the base in the ground or against the foot or body or locking the back arm. 7.5 Projectile weapons designed to be thrown must be thrown in such a way as to not injure the opponent. Baseball or cricket style throws are not allowed. 7.6 A strike from a projectile weapon will be taken as a thrust from a bladed weapon. 7.7 .7. Killing from behind is defined as killing an opponent where the shoulder of the fencer's sword arm, i.e., the one that would wield the blow, is behind the line defined by the opponent's shoulders. 7.7.1 Killing from behind is allowed in melee scenarios if it has been announced beforehand. 7.7.2 Killing from behind is achieved by laying the weapon over the opponent's shoulder so that the tip is visible to the opponent while calling out clearly, you have been killed from behind, or other short, clear phrase. The combatant must take care not to strike their opponent with the quillions, guard, or other part of the weapon. 7.8 The sword, defensive object, and any body part may make contact with the opponent's weapon or defensive object to parry and deflect. If a combatant's movement results in any part of the combatant's body making contact with the opponent's weapon that is equivalent to a valid blow, the blow is to be taken as having been struck. 7.9 In rapier combat and cut and thrust combat, grasping of the opponent's blade is allowed. No pressure may be exerted to bend the blade. If the blade that is grasped moves or twists in the grasping hand, that hand is deemed disabled. 7.10 If an effective blow is thrown before or on the same moment as an event that would stop a fight, a hold being called, the fighter being killed themselves, etc., the blow shall count. If the blow is thrown after the hold, killing blow, or other event, it shall not count. 7.11 Though the gloved hand may be used to parry an opponent's weapon or wrist, it shall not be used to grasp or strike an opponent. Fleeting contact outside these confines is allowed. And that ends and concludes um, Section 7, Use of Weapons and Defensive Objects. Our next video will pick up with Section 8, Acknowledgement of Blows. So, as always, I hope this helps somebody out there. My name is Ingegard Kassanrazi. If you have any questions regarding the recording, and as always, please check with your local marshals regarding any of these rules and refer to the handbook and any appendices or footnotes that are necessary. And as always, I hope you have a fantastic day.